In today's tutorial, we'll be creating this particular video text effect. You can use it with images as well, but it's really fun and really cool. So let's figure out how we can create it. In our default scene, we'll tap X to delete the default cube and then press Shift A and search for a text object. Then we can press RX 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. After that, we can press Tab to go into edit mode and type in whatever text we want. So for the tutorial, I'll state Aurora because I want a video of the Aurora Borealis to be present on this text. Now you can go to the text properties over here and change the font to whatever font you feel suits. I want to go with something bold so that more of the texture can be seen. Let's click this button, go to the Windows font folder and search for whichever font you want. So I'm going to go with impact and that seems good enough. Next, I'm going to scroll down to the alignment and for the horizontal alignment, I'm just going to change this from left to center and that will be the text object for which we work with. Beyond that, under the geometry, I might extrude it later on, but we'll initially apply the texture with this. So to start the texturing process, we'll first change our viewport shading to render and we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows and click and drag to create a new window and change this to the shader editor. After that, we can press this plus button to create a new material and zoom in and add in an image texture. So let's press shift A, search for image texture, and we have to open the video file that we have. So let's press this. And once you choose the video file, you can take the color output and plug it into the emission. Now you see that the video is completely distorted. So to fix that, you select the image texture node and press control T to add in a texture coordinate and mapping nodes with the node wrangler enabled. If you don't have node wrangler enabled, you can enable it from your edit preferences add-on or you can just add in the texture coordinate and mapping nodes manually. Then we have to switch this from UV to object and we should get a better representation of our video but there's still a lot of things to change. The first thing is that the video seems a little bit squished on the x-axis and that's because our original video file was not in a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So we have to take care of the aspect ratio using this scale values. So we'll press shift A and search for a value node and we'll search for a combined XYZ node. So then we can take this value node and plug it into the X and we can use the aspect ratio before we plug it into the Y. So let's press shift A, search for a math node and change this from add to multiply and we have to multiply it by the aspect ratio. So since I know that the aspect ratio of my original footage was 1.78, I can just change this to 1.78 and then plug this value into the socket Y and change this Z value to one and change this value to something like one. And then I can plug this into the scale. By doing this, it's no longer stretched or pushed on the X axis. If you don't have, or you don't know what the aspect ratio is, what you can do is go to where the image or video was stored, right click and go to the properties there under the details, you will be able to find out the frame width and frame height. After that, you can open up a calculator, type in the width divided by the height. So in my case, it'll be 1920 by 1080. And that way you get the ratio. So 1.78. So that is what you have to multiply the Y axis value by over here. So once you've done this, the next problem that we face is that if you actually play the animation, there's no change happening in the video. And that's because we have to choose the right number of frames. So on frame zero, it's frame one. But as we continue on, since we're saying that the number of frames in the movie sequence is only one, it's going to remain as one. So to change that, we just type in the number of frames from the video that we want. And since I want this to be 10 seconds long, I'm going to actually make it 300. And that way the video should start playing. If it isn't playing, you can switch on auto refresh and cycling as well. And now you can see that the video is actually moving around and it looks like an aura, which is perfectly well. However, we're still not actually centralized. So to change this image to make it perfectly in the center, you can go ahead and play around with the X location. So I'm going to have to change this X location to 0.5 and that way it comes to the center. But but you see the image is too small. So the image starts to repeat on the right hand side and the left hand side. To prevent that, you can change this value node. And as we start reducing the value, the image starts getting larger and you can just make it so that it fits through the entire text. Now we have a single video that's playing and animating throughout our animation. Next, we can set all of our defaults by going to our render properties, switching on bloom and screen space reflections. Then we can go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. And ideally the frame rate should match the frame rate of your video. And then I'll change the end frame to 300 and you can choose whatever output folder you want, file format as well. I'm going to choose FFmpeg video and coding. I'm going to change the container to MPEG4 and output quality. I'm going to choose perceptually lossless. So now if you play the animation, this is what we get, but you can make this even better by increasing the emission strength to something like five to get some nice bloom and in the world settings you can change the color all the way to black. You can also switch off the light or just select it and delete it. Maybe 5 is too bright so I'll change the emission to 3. Then I'll press GZ and just move it up by 0.02 units and then I'll press Shift A and search for a mesh plane which will act as our ground plane. I'll scale this up by 100 then I'll go and add in a new material and just increase the metallic value all the way to 1 so that there's really nice reflections and I'll reduce the roughness down to 0.3 so that the reflections are even better. I also see that at the bottom of these 
these letters, the other image is coming in. So I have to change the positioning. So let's go back to the mapping node on the image texture and just play around with the Y as well to just bring it down so that it perfectly fits. So that looks great. And that's actually all there is to this effect. If you were to now extrude it by going to the object properties of the text, you can see that you get some thickness, but the actual image texture just stretches on the Y axis. So I think that's fine enough for what I'm doing. So I'm going to leave it as is, but you can always choose to play around with the settings and maybe give the edges over here a different texture altogether, but I'll leave it like this. Next, if you want to see how I created that reel, we can quickly go ahead and do that. We'll start off by placing the camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear its rotation, and then press enter. Then we'll press R X 90 to rotate it about the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we can press G Z to just move it up by a little bit and then press G Y and bring it back. Then you can press zero to go into your camera view. And this is what we have. Maybe I'll just bring it down by a little bit more and that's fair enough. After that, I'll select my camera, press shift S and select cursor to select it. So that way the 3D cursor comes to the origin of my camera, after which I can just select this text and add in three other variations. So let's press shift D, enter, tab and just type in whatever I want. So this one I want it to be an ocean and then press tab again. After that, I can press shift D once again, enter, tab and call this river and tab. So now let's select this river material, go to the materials over here and press this duplicate button to make it its own material and now just open a river video. So for the time being, let's just hide the other text so that you can just play around with the river video. Of course, you might have to change around these values based on the aspect ratio of your new video. And you can play around with the size as well till you get something that you want as well as the location. So I think this looks good enough for my river. So I can go ahead and hide it and unhide my ocean text. Let's select the ocean text and press this button to make it its own material after which we can open an ocean video. And there we have that. But remember when you update this, I should have done that on the Aurora one as well. The frames get reset as well. So we have to give this the right number of frames and it should work as a perfect video. As usual, we'll play around with the location just so that there's more of the ocean present. So once you're done with that, you can press zero and unhide all of these objects. And then you can select the first text and just change the pivot point from individual origins or median point to the 3D cursor. That way, if you rotate it about the Z axis, it'll move or rotate about the 3D cursor. Now, since there are three different words, I'm going to rotate them by 360 divided by three. If you had four, you would divide it by four and so on and so forth. In this case, 360 divided by three is 120. So I'll press RZ 120. 20. Then I'll select another text and press RZ minus 120 or essentially it would be 120 plus 120. So 240 would also work, but that's how you just place them. After that, you can press shift A and search for an empty plane axis. And then you can select all of these three text objects that you have. Finally, press shift select and select the empty and then press control P set parent to object. So now if you just rotate this empty, the text rotates along with it. So on frame zero, you can press I rotation and then go maybe 60 frames I rotation so that it focuses on the first one for 60 frames. And then maybe the next 20 frames, we can change to the next one. So let's press RZ 120 and then press I rotation and then give this 60 frames as well. So on frame 160, I rotation. And then after 20 frames, RZ 120, I rotation. And then 60 frames later, go I rotation. And then the next 20 frames, or I've been going 40 frames. So let's go with 40 frames. You can press RZ 120, I rotation. So that way you get an animation where it stays on one particular object for a while and then it shifts to the next one. To make this movement much snappier, you can actually switch this from the timeline to the graph editor and just expand this and hide everything except for the Z rotation. Just zoom out. So control middle mouse button, you can change the scaling so you can zoom out and fit everything in. After that, change this from bounding box center to individual origins. And then you can just scale them up. So that way the transition will start off moving much slower and then have a much faster shift into the next object. So that just makes it look better in my opinion. So this is the type of animation that I'm going to go for. Once I'm done with that, I can also go to my render properties and switch on motion blur and just change the shutter down to maybe 0.3 to add in a little bit of motion blur and that will be good enough. So to make sure that the motion blur is enough, just go to a frame where there's a lot of motion. So this Z value should be fairly vertical. So something like this is good enough. Then I'll just press render image and you can see how much motion blur there is. If this is too much, reduce the shutter. If it's too less, increase the shutter. And once you're happy with it, all you have to do is press render animation. I really love this technique because you can create music videos. You can keep changing the text. You can do a lot of cool things with it. You can also texture the floor to add in some nice variations to the reflections as well. And the possibilities are limitless. You can also use your own animations such as the plexus animations and for animations like that you can actually make them transparent as well which will make it look really cool so with that thank you so much for watching i really hope this helped and i'd love to see what creative things you all come up with until the next video comes out thank you so much for watching keep creating and stay creative